All right, all right, all right. So we're going to talk about DNA now, which is very, very important, as you know, in biology, because it's essentially one of the major, major building blocks of life. And DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And DNA and its partner RNA are two of the major nucleic acids that you use to provide information about proteins. And DNA essentially provides a template or provides some instructions for protein formation. And the nucleic acid is the polymer that's composed of different nucleotide monomers. And a nucleotide versus a nucleoside is something we'll be discussing. But a nucleotide essentially has three different components. It has a nitrogenous base, which is a ringed carbon-containing structure that has a fair bit of nitrogen in it. And so here we have adenine, one of the four nitrogenous bases that you'll encounter in your DNA nucleotides. That nitrogenous base will be attached to a pentose sugar. It's a pentose sugar because it has a five carbon structure, one, two, three, four, and five right there. So pentose, pent meaning five. And the third component of a nucleotide is a phosphate group, which has phosphorus in the middle and then oxygen and OH groups surrounding it. And so for DNA, the pentose sugar that you'll use is going to be deoxyribose. Here I've drawn a ribose molecule. And ribose is a five-membered pentose sugar with an OH group here on the second carbon. In order to make it deoxyribose, what we do is we remove this OH group there. And so now this is deoxyribose, which is the sugar that you use in DNA. The way that these nucleotides are formed is through a series of condensation reactions. You may know condensation reactions as dehydration reactions as well. Essentially what happens is you have an OH group here and a hydrogen there, and these two groups are joined, and in the process, water is released. Similarly, with the nucleotide, you'll have an OH group here and a hydrogen from there, or you could say that it's the OH from the phosphate and the hydrogen from the ribose or deoxyribose sugar. But once again, it's going to be a condensation reaction where you join things by releasing water. So condensation or dehydration reactions is what is used to form a nucleotide. For example, this will be the adenosine monophosphate nucleotide. And ultimately, a nucleotide has three components, the nitrogenous base, the pentose sugar, and the phosphate group. All three of these are bound. Later on, we'll discuss the three end and the five end of these, and that essentially refers to the, th the carbon three in the sugar and carbon five in the sugar. So when you're looking at one nucleotide, the direction toward carbon five is considered the five terminus or the five end, or it could be called five prime end and three prime will be in the other direction toward this three terminus. And so a nucleotide essentially consists of these three components. You may also encounter the term nucleoside. A nucleoside is the nitrogenous base with the pentose sugar, but no phosphate group. So nucleosides do not have a phosphate, nucleotides do. The way that I think is good to remember this is you think of a nucleoside as having a nitrogenous base and a second component. A nucleotide is the nitrogenous base and it has a second and third component. So something that has a third component is a nucleotide. Third and tide both have T's in them. And uh, something with only the nitrogenous base and a second component is the nucleoside second and side. And so that's a good way to think of it. A nucleotide has a first, second, and third component where a nucleoside only has a first and second component. And once you understand these, we'll now go into a discussion of the, how the polymers form between nucleic acids, uh, between nucleotides in order to form a nucleic acid. And we'll talk about a lot of the interactions that aid in the structural integrity of that. And then we'll get on to how DNA replicates and this central dogma of DNA turning into RNA 
and encoding a protein. All of these use the DNA molecule as a template, and so now we'll get to that discussion.